tonight. Council Member Chapman? Here. Council Member Clayton? Here. Council Member Kendall? Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Please stand for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection. We will now salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting is provided in the following manner. The meeting notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Star Ledger, on September 27th, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. We are on now to the public participation portion of the meeting. Do I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any members of the public who would like to be heard? Please come to the mic, state your name and address for the record. Good evening, everyone. Pam Lamberton, Sunset Avenue. I have six, six questions about the ordinance that we're discussing and then one general question at the end. Um, at the last meeting, we discussed over and over again about how this particular ordinance does not pertain to the pool clubs or the private pool or the public pool and has absolutely nothing to do with that. So um, I would like to see the first two sentences of item uh, packet page 11. I printed it off the internet this morning, so I'm assuming you've got packet page 11 the way I do. You no, no, no. If you have 11, doesn't she need to, you need to go get that copy. No, 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 no. Pack, the same? packet page. Oh, yeah. Oh, please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry. Everybody has 11. <laughs> okay. We have 11. Um, I, I, I would request that the first two sentences uh, on uh, page 11, um, where it refer, re references the beach clubs be struck from this particular ordinance. That's what I'm texting. Page 11. Okay, so <laughs> this is why I'm saying. I, <laughs> right. So I am at where you're at, but I am not on packet page 11. Have you taken that one from there, Right, Pam? and I'm saying she's here. She's at item one, revised boardwalk language. 3.2 open space. <laughs> You're on 3.2 Open Space Recreation Community Facilities, right, Pam? Okay. No. Kathleen just gave me a copy from over there. It is packet page 14. Okay. Now we're on the same page. On page 14. Um, this. Uh, what, the ordinance? I have 14. I have it. No, this is Exhibit A. It's Exhibit A. Yes, oh. Exhibit A. Okay. Exhibit, right. Exhibit A is page 14. Packet page on 3.2 open spaces. Right. Um, okay. It says change the existing language below. And I'm suggesting that we strike the first two sentences because that has to do with the beach club. And we know this has absolutely nothing to do with the beach clubs. Um, also, there's a discrepancy uh, again on page, packet page. 15, which describes the parking solution, um, which appears to be okay, but it also appears to be a permanent solution. And in the whereas is up front, unless it's been fixed between my version and this version, it's called, it says it's interim. Okay, I'm gonna give you another minute since we went back and forth with packages. Mm -hmm. And then the three minutes that it's up. But again, these are all questions you can ask during the second reading. Okay, it looks, it looks like it's the one on the table has been corrected since the one on the, okay. was the one that was on the internet. Because the so one the on the table says permanent. So we're all agreed that this parking solution described is a permanent solution then. And, and you also added the description of what those uh, spare, 
uh, spare bot spots would be. So that's that's okay. Um, on package packet on oh, packet page eleven, which is now. In the reference to the jetty rock, which you were adding, um, it was unclear when we discussed this the other night where that jetty rock was going. So the council suggested that some verbiage be added that said the council would have a say in the final design of where that jetty rock has is supposed to go. I understand there's some new information on that. Maybe you received some this afternoon about what where that jetty rock is going, but it is in one of the diagrams, and it's going as close to Lock Harbor as can be, and it is in the design. So I don't, I don't know if you feel that you need to change that verbiage any longer. I don't feel like I need to change the verbiage now that I understand where the jetty rock's going. I think there was ample confusion on, on where these jetty rocks were going. I concur. Um, on packet. Uh, packet page 15, the offsite parking reference. That first word, new, was added in one of the iterations. And I was wondering what the implications of that word new are. Does it mean new as of the date of this amendment, or, new, or is anything that's currently being considered not considered new construction, new redevelopment projects? I'm thinking specifically of the pool clubs, which are up, okay. are under discussion right now. So would they be considered your last new? question because we're way past the three minutes. <coughs> I'm sorry? Your, your last question, because this is the three minute public portion. This is, the this is not on the ordinance. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, no, that's why I said I'd give you an extra minute because we were back and forth. I'm sorry, do you want me to wait or do? Okay, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Any other members of the public? See, so you know, but a motion to close. Okay, well, you have to get up to the microphone. No. Uh, hi, Ernest Minoli, four hundred Deal Lake Drive. Asbury Park, New Jersey. I have no idea why I'm here. I'm interested in Asbury, you all know that. But I'll tell you the truth, I can't figure out what you're doing week after week, month after month. You can't hear half the stuff. The public is disenfranchised, nobody's here. And, and yet, it just keeps going on and on. You show up at one meeting and all of a sudden, somebody from the beach club is at that meeting. And you say, well, why are they here? In this meeting, I thought it wasn't that meeting. So, what I think is all the <clears throat> keep on going, Earth. okay. What I think is that, um, that's part of that's part of the plan. In other words, to me, this whole thing got rolled out after the election, and then the position of the mayor and the council was, and the city manager. Was, well, we didn't know anything about it. The boardwalk's gone. When did that happen? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You didn't know the boardwalk was coming out? Please. And then I go to another meeting and they're saying, well, we'll do the parking garages, but we want the meandering boardwalk now. But that wasn't part of the thing where you worked out with the eight million to put the boardwalk back. But now it's back on the table. And then you sit here and I, I don't know, like who could figure this out? Anybody? Uh, really? Uh, it's amazing. So, so what I've decided to do is just keep coming and express what I consider concerned citizen, like watchdog, for like, what are you doing? Because nobody knows what you're doing. All I know is nobody likes it. I mean, I'm everywhere in town. I sit, I eat, I do my right. Nobody likes what's going on, but nobody can figure out how to stop it. It's like a, a train wreck going down the train. Every, every single thing, like everything on every corner. It's like, when did that happen? You know, when did they approve four stories above there? No parking. When did that happen? 
Nobody knows. Yeah. And then we find out oh, there's going to be a new garage right where the flagpole is. Why, why put it there? Why not put like 30 stories where the rain park is and really get some parking? Who wants something blocking the front view? It doesn't. Who comes up with all these ideas? I, I, I'm not looking for an answer. I'm only actually I'm talking to the public who hopefully is watching this on APTV because wherever I go, the, the, the general consensus is this city's out of control. It's got no cohesive government. The planning board is autonomous from the zoning. The zoning is from the city engineers. And everybody comes together in some little charade to try and please the developers. And the rest of us get stuck with no parking, higher taxes, crime, corruption, crime bars and clubs, hotels that we're not allowed in, beach clubs that we can't afford. Thank you. Thank you. Move to close. Motion to close. All in favor? All right. Okay, uh, Ernest, I'm going to correct you on a couple of things. Well, I wish you wouldn't do that unless you let me respond. I'm not, I'm not going to let you respond. That's why I closed the meeting. Okay. Good. Well, TV Land will love it. TV Land, who you're preaching to, according to you, they'll love it. All right, have a bowl. That's the only way you're going to win out is when you can keep me quiet. I'm not trying to keep you quiet, sure except if, if, you, if, you, if you keep it up, I may have you removed, so your time is up. So I'm going to correct you on a couple of things that you might have been mistaken about. Well, maybe you'll send those same two police officers to remove. Ernest, now I will not, yes, I will respond because you're doing the public a disservice. Your, your, your statement as far as the position of the garage is totally wrong. You're keep on ranting at the planning board meeting and hear that the Mandarin boardwalk is back is wrong. At the planning board meeting, it was perfectly explained to you that it's been changed even the language, which I believe is now it's curvier. And it starts at the end of the old boardwalk and goes to the fisherman's lot. So there is no boardwalk as you portray it to be in public. You're wrong again, sir. And uh, I guess you didn't go to Long Branch, but have a safe trip. And now we, Michael, do you want to, we have a, we have a slight snafu that Michael is going to explain. And then we're going to take about a 10 minute recess because to make it fair to the people, because there's a couple new handouts that Pam mentioned. They got posted around two o'clock today. We realized the entire public may not have seen them. They're very short. I can read them in 10 minutes. Anybody can read them in 10 minutes. So we're going to take a 10 minute break just so everybody can get it. I'm going to have Michael explain it and then you can go get a copy. Then we'll take a recess to give you enough time to digest them and ask any questions when we open up the hearing for this reading of the second ordinance. Or the second word reading second reading on the ordinance continuation okay michael thank you mayor uh there's on the first page in the third whereas the march 2018 date is actually a june 2018 date there's going to be a proposed amended language the language that should be stricken be stricken is allowing developers of residential units to provide off-street parking on an interim basis while permanent parking structures are under construction it should be changed to allowing developers of residential units to provide off-site parking and a permanent parking structure. There is a clarification. Um, if you look at the clarification of this, the paragraph that starts clarifying that block 145, lot one, that's actually lot two. And then on the now therefore be it ordained, the proposed amendment dated August is actually um, October, September, September 2019. But that's the original date from the initial hearing. So those changes um, should be just read into the record and the ordinance amended on the floor. Thank you. Move to recess. Okay, we're gonna, I'll make a motion to recess to 6.30. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll take a short break until 6.30. <laughs> we're on to individual resolutions. Resolution 2019-318, a resolution of the City of Asbury Park 
New Jersey amending the infrastructure component report for the waterfront redevelopment area. Right. Does she have to close the packet? No. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to resolution 2019-319, a resolution of the city of Asbury Park, New Jersey, adopting a second amendment to the amended and reinstated redeveloper and land disposition agreement by and between the city of Asbury Park and Asbury Partners, LLC. Do I have a motion? Can I suggest that we take that after the adoption of the ordinance to amend the plan? Because this, this agreement... Sure. Uh, I am the special counsel for the city and my suggestion is that this is the resolution to amend the redevelopment agreement follow the adoption of the plan because the plan has to be adopted first before you can amend the agreement. So it's just a question of the order of adoption. Whatever the lawyers say is the proper thing to do, we're going to do. So you two figure it out and tell us what to do. Okay. Appropriate to hold it. So, had there been a motion on this? Yeah. Three nine to adopt the plan. Well, had there no, no, been a motion no. yet on the resolution number three nineteen? No. no, no, no. So then we'll just defer that until okay. after the second reading on the ordinance. Okay. okay. So, what do we do, Fred? Are we so, doing um, the Melody, why don't you read the title of the ordinance that's up for second reading and the continued public hearing? Okay, it is Ordinance 20 1938, an ordinance of the City of Asbury Park authorizing the adoption of an amendment to the waterfront redevelopment plan. And as Mr. Capabianco had indicated, uh, there will be a need for the council to formally uh, amend that ordinance to effectuate the four revisions that he put on the record before we took the break. Um, Mr. Capobianco reviewed all four of those changes before we took the, uh, the break. So um, there would need to be a motion to amend the ordinance to incorporate those four revisions as already stated on the record, and a second and a vote to amend the ordinance accordingly. And presuming that that vote is taken and approved, then you would reopen the public hearing on the ordinance as amended. Move it. A motion to amend? Correct. Well, man. Yep. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance amended. Now, do I have a or do I have a motion to open the public reopen the public hearing on twenty nineteen thirty eight? As it. amended. As amended. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore. Are there yes. any members of the public who would like to speak? Please come to the mic, state your name and address for the record. Pam Lamberton, Sunset Avenue. I apologize for jumping the gun before. So excited to get this wrapped up. Um, so on packet page, 14, the two leading sentences re referencing the beach clubs. Since this ordinance has nothing to do with the beach clubs and they're handled elsewhere in their waterfront redevelopment plan, I would like to see those two sentences struck, if that's possible. Um, <coughs> on pa packet page 15, the first sentence has um, in one of the iterations along the way, the word new was added to that, and I was wondering what the implications of new was. Should we be answering these? I'm looking at the professionals to answer them. Should we be answering these as she's asking, and why not? I mean, not? because, yeah, just put, so why was the word new put in? Do you want me to answer the first question first? Okay, let's go to the first question. The first question is part of section 3.2, which is a 20 <coughs> plan. A new private beach club will be developed on the boardwalk. That is existing language and cannot be taken out. Can um, I can I 
I ask you to explain that further. This is I this is an amendment. I, it's not it's not an amendment to the entire plan. It's part of this aspect. If that language <clears> is re removed, ISTAR would lose the right to build a private beach club. What? No, it's but elsewhere in the plan there it, that it's this, referenced. This section gives ISTAR the right to remove to build the, the private beach club, and if it's removed, <coughs> it will remove ISTAR the powers to do it. There is no change. This is existing language, and it is there because it's the entire paragraph. When you say existing language, Michael, you're saying existing language in the 2002 waterfront agreement. Yes, okay. plan, the waterfront plan. In the plan. Under, underline is new language. Strike through is language being removed. Everything that is in regular blackface is the existing plan as it stands. But I, don't, but I still don't understand the beach clubs and the, beach, the pool clubs are mentioned elsewhere in the plan. Yes. But and th this ordinance has nothing to do, and and ISTAR's attorney confirmed that this ordinance has nothing to do with the pool clubs. Yes, but changing that language is changing the plan, and we're not changing that part of the plan. It's but just. You are, but you are changing that part we, of the plan. If, what you're proposing to remove that would remove ISTAR from being able to build a private beach club. This is just the sentence before it. We could start this whole section. At a public beach club will also be developed or it can be started at the northern end of the boardwalk will be extended it doesn't matter that is existing language that is not not being proposed to be changed and any change with that would be a substantial change it would need to have to be is that would have is to be that reintroduced. your opinion michael or is it our attorney's it is the opinion? attorney's opinion they're both sitting here would we had a conference call on it yesterday could could i ask the attorney to explain it because okay. yes. i'm sorry uh, you're losing me it's exactly uh, City Manager mentioned. The plan is being amended to amend Section 3.2, which is entitled Open Space, Recreation, <coughs> and Community Facilities. And, and as is true when you draft new language, the paragraph is, is repeated. But only that part of the paragraph that's changing is indicated for changes, as has been indicated with the underlying and the strike ends. However, that you, you wouldn't you wouldn't pick up the paragraph in the middle of it so as to cause confusion. So it's a question of taking the existing paragraph 3.2 in its entirety, which includes a reference to the beach club, and then re restating it with the changes. So that's what will be uh, the uh, final result here. There will not be any change in the provision about the beach club. And I'll go further, a step further. Uh, and say that it would be a substantial change if we were to take that out, and it would require the consent of the developer to strike out the reference to the private beach club. Because we're saying here that the section 3.2 is being changed as follows. It would make no change in the existing language for the beach club. But if we struck out the beach club there, then the beach club right would go away. And the would not have the right then under the plan uh, to construct the beach club. And we'd have a lawsuit against the city if we did that. We can't take that line of time. So I, I guess a lot of what I introduced myself a few minutes ago. My name is Joseph Marazzini. I am a law firm of Marazzini Falcon. I am a specialty development counsel for the city and represent municipalities uh, almost exclusively around the state of New York. And I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. I, I'm, I still don't under, understand. We are on, on packet page 14, it says change existing language. And on packet page 15, there's insert new language. So why can't we just remove that, <coughs> those sentences? <coughs> I mean, we are modifying the plan, so. We're modifying the plan with respect to the, uh, the board. The purpose of this amendment is to provide for new design for the North End board. And so what we do is take this paragraph and we take out the language regarding the prior design of the board and put in new language for the new design of the new board. But it, but this ordinance has nothing to do with the pool club. 
and so I I don't understand why it needs why it needs well, to be. Well, the legislature changes amends the law. This is common practice and practice, and it has been legislation. This is legislation that was passed in 3.5 parking in the prime renewal area parking requirements found on page 50 and 51. The language that is being questioned is off-site off -site parking colon. New development projects may satisfy the parking requirements in section 3.5. The key to this is the words parking requirements are capital, which makes it um, a very valuable term. Any activity that requires parking, and I want to rephrase that, development that needs to have parking to meet the plan can satisfy that by the definitions and the objections uh, objectives as the rest of the um, language is if there is no parking requirements this does not apply so if there's something that needs parking this will will allow for the sharing of spaces if it doesn't need parking it doesn't need parking and this doesn't apply and what does the word new have to do with New development. If it's something that's being built new, you don't have old development. It didn't. Well, it didn't. It you didn't used to be there, and it was added for some reason. And I was just trying to figure out why it was added. I, I don't know. But it's it's new development. Okay. Uh, another question I have regarding the density of the buildings whose height is changing. So if the height is being reduced. Um, and the number of units per building is not being reduced, then the density of the building is going to be greater. If, if the density is not increased and lowering the building also results in fewer units, um, the risk that the redeveloper is, has like, you know, X number of units left over that he's unable to build because he's done with his build out and there's no more room and he hasn't built 3,164 3, units. Um, there, there's nothing in the waterfront redevelopment plan that calls for any kind of uh, payback to the redeveloper because he can't build those other units. No, there's no credit 
Um, so for example, the Vive and Monroe, those are smaller than they could be. There is no credit of four versus eight stories or 100 units versus 50. If I start built 50 and they're allowed 100, they do not get to put 50 somewhere else. There is no credit, there's no density bonus or credit Okay, in that's, the that's what I'm asking. So that magic number of 3,164 is now something less? No, that does not change. So there is a credit? No. If they build, if a site calls for 120 units, they build 50, they have to find 70 somewhere else that still fits within the plan. And if they're all done and they still have 1,000 units and no place to build them, they have a credit? No they would owe us those units technically. And at that point, the attorneys would be involved because technically they'd be in default of the plan and that would be in 2032, I think it is, when the plan sunsets. Okay. So the, the credit is in our favor then? For density and congestion, yes. Okay. Um, on packet page 21, um, where they're discussing the, the to add the features to the walls of the parking garage. Um, I wanted to add after the, where it says planter width, I wanted to add something but will not interfere with pedestrian walkways. It talks about three dimensional um, additions to that wall and I just want to make sure that it doesn't stick out into the sidewalk. Uh, there's a couple things with that. It's just on the phone call we had, as the attorneys will tell you, um, they thought that that was um, a substantial change and would recommend it here. Additionally, um, operationally, anything that goes within the public right away would require council approval anyway. Um, so if any developer plops a planter or a 3D thing in, in a sidewalk that blocks um, pedestrian access, we would tell them to move it or move it ourselves. So um, that's part of our public access plan that DEP's approved. So the two big things is one, Joe will back this up, it's a substantial change that would have to reintroduce the ordinance. And two, they would need council approval anyway if it's in the right way. <coughs> okay. Can um, I just clarify that? that so just having, <coughs> having been on the council for a couple of years. Joe, you're saying that adding the sentence uh, to you know ensure egress is a substantial change to the ordinance. Yes, a material change to the ordinance, which then would mean we wouldn't be able to adopt it tonight. Uh, those, but the, just to clarify again, those words would be a substantial change to this okay. ordinance. Okay. Yeah. And That's all. I would have to approve. And, and, I, and I would also say the ones that are uh, are on the table now, based on the amendment that you voted for. In my opinion, are not material changes that would require that you re advertise and have another public hearing. Right. And the desire is to move forward tonight in order to make sure that there's every opportunity for that North End work to be available next summer. So there's the, there's the time constraint is pressing. <coughs> so we're anxious not to have a further. My, my last question is a, a general question. Um, how does this amendment or ordinance become memorialized uh, as far as the redeveloper is concerned? I know what the council is going to do. You're going to pass an ordinance and it'll get signed and stamped and put in the book. But will you reissue the waterfront redevelopment plan with the changes with a cover sheet that's signed by both ISTAR and the city, or how did, what's the process after this gets approved? That's one of the things that we've talked about as part of the global amendments. Um, and this is something that has irked myself and the director of planning. Uh, for many years, the plans that these changes would be would just be thrown into the back. And that's horrible for people who come in, like myself and Joe. There are so many different changes. And Jennifer, you're sitting there going, what is this? Where does this go? Keenan, who's been here for a while, just smirked because he's been through that already. Um, from the city side, the Michelle Alonzo and myself have talked over the last couple months of how do we update all the plans, not just the waterfront one, to get that real live, living, breathing document, <coughs> footnotes that says this was changed on this date, so there is a better history of it. For this plan, um, it's going to be part of the global amendments, which we probably will start again early next year, because 
it just it literally needs someone has to sit down and retype this in Word because the Politan decision has to be included in it. It's there's just like three or four different documents that need to be. Put well, the into it. the 2004 was amended was amended in 2004. It was amended in 2010, and they were all reissued with a cover page, and the cover page was signed by both parties. And I'm just and, and, well, you and, and those changes though were never actually incorporated into the documents language and spots. So okay. it's really everyone sitting in a room, and we're going to have to throw it up on a wall, all the different versions of it, to make sure that there's one clean version. And okay. you know, how many attorneys have been involved in this? Um, both sides, Jennifer and Joe, are new to this this year. Um, it, it's it's a huge, huge undertaking. Where Brian and I have also talked about it, that we figure it will take six to nine months just for this plan from the city. We have like 12 other plans. It, they all need to be updated with that. Yeah. Well, this ordinance in particular was just seems like it didn't go very smoothly. This it one is I would put more proofreading. I would actually put this one at the third worst. <laughs> the Springwood Avenue one is a mess. Uh, Michelle, well, before I even started, we didn't have a full version of Adobe, so we couldn't make PDF changes. So that's why everything was thrown in there. And we were like, bought a license to make a change of PDF. <coughs> and then this was bad. The Springwood Ave, the Sun, Sun, Central Business District had something like 16 amendments that were never incorporated properly. So it, it drives us crazy because we're always cross-referencing things. Do you agree? Uh, I certainly agree with everything you said about the plan. But you made a very good point about the signature of the development. And that will come after the plan is adopted. I still have a few minutes to go. I said, let's hold off on that resolution to sign the amended agreement because following this then there's a, a, a contract with the developer will be amended and that will provide for the commitment to build the new walkway or the, the way we described it in the plan and follow up on the provision so there's a separate document that follows this thank you thank you for all your work on this council thank you maureen nevin dla court um it's, it is confusing, and I think it, one of the reasons that this is so confusing, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I can hear myself. Um, it's because we've always been told that you cannot change the plan because you can't amend the plan. Uh, the city would end up in court getting sued by the developer. So this is massive change. The global, what was that title? Global. The, the, the global plan amendments is everything, and then a year and a half ago it was amended for lot by lot. The plan can be changed, it just needs to have a, uh, the, it just needs consent from both parties. And but we're, we're never told that. We're always told that you can't change it, it's you know, set in stone. You need both parties to consent, and then you change it uh, lot by lot. This, if we work together, we can make changes for the betterment of everything. I mean, is this the time for the, the public to actually promote some of the concerns they have in, a, in an amendment no, that they would this, propose? This amendment, the, this, your discussion really should just be on the amendment at hand, yeah. not the larger scale global process of what needs to be changed in the entire plan. But it's the amendment at hand that is the example that my question is based on. The right. fact that it's, so, right. it's so an any, opened any, document. Any questions about the ordinance are relevant. Tie in anything to... John, could you use your mic? Any questions? The questions tonight have to be relevant to the ordinance that we're discussing. Right. If you say and mention something else, it's not like you know, the end of the world. But we can't start talking about the global tonight. It's got to be specifically on this ordinance. And these are all changes that ISTAR has asked for. These are all changes that have been agreed to by ISTAR in the city. As far as an amendment, and as what Michael was saying, is like you might have been told by other councils something we can't change the plan, which is false because Pam will say it's been changed so many times. It can't be changed unilaterally. One side, be it us or be it ISTAR, cannot just change it. It has to be agreed upon by both sides. I don't, I don't see why the public would object to that. No, I agree. That's, what, that's why we're mm -hmm. doing it tonight. I've, I've heard it too, been told by every council that we would end up in court, which is another thing that I'd like to ask because I understand that at one point, was it 05 or 10, um, we agreed 
with, it was ISTAR actually at that time, as well as today, um, that we would accept arbitration. And that was the end of any threat of lawsuits. Okay, I'm gonna again have to rein you back in and say, tonight all we're discussing is the ordinance in front of us, not happen, what happened 2005, 2010, or the future. There's a council meeting, Next Wednesday night, you can come up to the microphone and make all those suggestions. Well, the reason I'm mentioning it now is because the attorney mentioned lawsuits. Okay. Right. Well, so you you didn't mean to exclude arbitration. That's great. So we took on that too. Uh, so what is the time frame that is, is repeatedly referred to. What is driving the urgency at the moment? Of these amendments? That, that you, yeah, that you pass this very quickly and you get on with it. What's uh, the urgency? Without these amendments, the boardwalk isn't rebuilt. Um, in regards to some of the, the parking issues, especially the lot by lot amendment that was passed last year, um, the current plan requires that all parking be developed on site, but for small development that can't happen because there's no space. So this will allow for developers to actually share space so that projects can happen, permanent parking in a structured space. Um, it allows for public art and public murals, which ISTAR and the city both want. Um, and this will also, which I can't get into, but there's going to be something coming up in the next two or three meetings that you'll see is a big thing in the city um, that paves the way for this with the shared parking. So this is going to- Can you define, <coughs> and you're, you're not consistent because you're not on mic, okay? okay. I'm usually loud. I appreciate it. Um, and so, and so as, much as, as, much as, as much as, as much as, I'm sorry, Maureen. The one shared parking? One second, Maureen. As much as I'm not letting Maureen talk about future events, Michael, I'm going to cut you off too yeah, because we've got to stick that. to the ordinance. Well, he said he wasn't going to go into it, but it, it's, it's for shared, shared parking. parking. It's if you have one of the, the smaller lots, um, you're required to put parking on site and the project can't develop then. So by doing this amendment, it allows the lot by lot development to actually happen more, um, which is one of the things that the council had been pressing for years. Let's, let's make lot by lot happen. And this is part of that. A lot of the projects that we've talked to developers about can't happen because they don't have parking, but now that this will allow them to have parking, it can actually go forward. It will allow the the developer to go ahead without parking? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. With Is it, <laughs> does it, uh, you mean it will allow the developer to go forward without parking? The parking will have to be on another site, like across the street. Mm -hmm. But. But it'll still be required. It's still going to be required. Yes, we're not in this city. We're not getting like letting go of people of parking. You have to provide parking. Okay. Thank you. I just broke my hand. Hi, Kathleen Muma, fifteen one fifteen oh one Ocean. I just can you help me understand better the. Um, the revising of the development control maps, why we're reducing height in the different, you know, on the different blocks. I just wondered why we, um, why the developer is accepting a reduction of height or what the strata, why would that happen? just want to understand it better. The developer was requesting the height reduction um, to make a project work and be more uniform and actually f just look better. Um, some of the heights were all off, and one of them, <coughs> one of the, one of the issues when you look at item four, you'll see the circle that says three slash six p. That really doesn't make any sense because where does it start? There was never any like okay, three feet starts and stops at one foot to twelve feet, and then you go up to six. There was never any of those standards set. So from a design and a development perspective, it's it's much better to have uniformity. Um, there's no real line of demarcation that was ever done. Okay, so it's basically they're just going through their plans and thinking, okay, this would work better if it's three stories instead of six. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Alexis Taylor, 1106 Sunset Ave. I just have a follow-up to that question. Um, 
and I have to clarify that I'm representing myself as a private citizen. Um, if the maximum height is changed, I mean, if the maximum height remained the same, couldn't they still build to those stories? Like, why does the maximum height have to be reduced? Because they asked for it. And why wouldn't we say yes and have a better de development control? If they don't want to go eight and they say we can go six, and they say let's make the plan six, and they're but giving if it they up. But could go, I mean, if it was at eight and they came in with six, it wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. It would but if they want the same thing. But if someone wants to give up that development control, okay. Yeah, they're giving it up to it for it. So, so okay. Hmm. I mean, I just think like the control remains with the city if it's a maximum of eight and they come in with six. Yeah, they could still go up two more stories. But now you've limited the density. At their request. And it was at their request. Okay, cool. Thanks. No, thank you. Move to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Do I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2019-38 as amended? Move it. Second. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to Resolution 2019. 319, a resolution of the City of Asbury Park adopting a second amendment to the amended and reinstated redeveloper and land disposition agreement by and between the City of Asbury Park and Asbury Partners LLC. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Did we cover everything? Okay. Yes. You got a motion second. and you got a second. Yep, all in favor? Aye. Aye.